Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to the next episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Folmachev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. In this episode, I'd like to talk to you about Mongo infrastructure. Uh, what you need for Mongo, uh, we're not going to talk actually sizing, we'll talk the number of servers. We'll do a separate video on the sizing and hardware specs. Um, but this one is about how many Mongo servers do you actually need with your Cypress setup. So let's, uh, let me actually introduce you to a very useful page on my cmsbestpractices.com website. It's the infrastructure diagrams page. You can get to it by simply clicking the infrastructure diagrams in the main menu. And here I have a collection of sample Lucy chart diagrams. By the way, if you have a Lucy chart account, uh, if you'd like to use these, uh, let me know and I'll gladly share it with you. So for this video, we'll take a look at the first three, the Mongo diagrams. So let's start from the beginning. With Mongo, with the XDB, you have three options, three major options for XDB setup. So one is you can have just a simple single Mongo server. Uh, without any redundancy. Uh, second setup is you can have a Mongo replica set. And a third is a sharded um, Mongo replica set. So let's take a look at when you would need each one. So uh, let's take a look at the first use case, a single Mongo server. Uh, so the single Mongo server setup does not offer any redundancy. And it's important that you, um, as a developer or an architect, uh, understand the risks that are involved with that. So when the XDB goes down, first of all, you will lose the analytics for that period of time. Uh, second, uh, Sitecore, some of the Sitecore uh, features and tools use Mongo um, DB or the XDB extensively. So once the XDB goes down, a lot of the Sitecore features will be disabled as well. For instance, uh, uh, let's say a GOIP service that caches um, the information in the Mongo database. My, uh, that will be out. Now the third, finally, a website could have custom code that would call the MongoDB database directly. Uh, so if you're, let's say, a developer, an architect coming into an existing Cypher solution, let's say for an upgrade, uh, definitely make sure to look through the code um, and ensure that there are no direct calls to the MongoDB if you're considering going with a single uh, server setup. However, if you're fine with analytics being out, if you're fine with a, uh, a lot of the Cypher features being down while the XDB is down, or you might even be okay with the website outage uh, for a short period of time. So then um, a single Mongo server uh, might work for you. Uh, in fact, uh, the load on Mongo is pretty small. About 80% of all the, all the Cypher solutions are okay with going with a single Mongo instance, especially if the hardware allows that. Uh, Cypher doesn't actually use Mongo that much. Remember that Cypher records all the session data in memory and only flushes it into the Mongo database at the session end event. Uh, there is uh, a little bit of pressure put on the Mongo servers when the processing servers kick in. Uh, to aggregate the data into the reporting database and crunch some um, numbers. However, it's uh, it's not a frequent event and it's a, it's a very short-lived event. So for the most part, Mongo server um, is simply sitting there waiting for um, you know the data to be uh, flushed from the memory, from the delivery instances. Of course, depending on the traffic, that um, amount of data might grow as well. So. This is, uh, this is a single instance, again, no redundancy, uh, and make sure you're okay with those three um, considerations of, um, about analytics, Cypher features, and uh, website potentially being down. Now, our second option involves having a Cypher, uh, or a Mongo replica set. Mongo replica set can be of two types, one where all three members of the replica set are Mongo database servers or one where we have two database servers and one arbiter. So in the Mongo world, number three is a magic number. It's the minimum amount of servers you have to have to have a high availability setup with Mongo. And that is required for the majority vote. Mongo is clever enough to uh, be able to pick a new primary in a replica set if the let's say the original primary were to go down and if we have a majority vote Mongo will automatically select the new primary server. 
and this happens only when you have three um, or more servers um, in the infrastructure. Um, and here's why. Let's say if we only had uh, two servers in the replica set, a primary and a secondary. Let's say if, if the primary were to go down, the secondary cannot select itself. That's rule number one is the primary. Plus, um, the primary is left all alone. There is no way of uh, telling whether it, the network to the replica set went down and this secondary instance just got disconnected away from the primary or did the primary really go down so there are many use cases that could create a scenario where the secondary server is isolated so it's very dangerous to have a server select itself as the primary so therefore it can't do that and this is why we need to add a third uh, player here um, this could be a full featured mongo server or if you'd like to save some cash on the um, hosting environment, um, make it a, an Arbiter. And an Arbiter is really a minimal setup server. Uh, it can run on another machine that runs other applications or other software. Remember, um, Mongo can run on Windows or on Linux, preferably, of course, Linux, uh, because it has better memory management. However, if you don't have Linux staff um, internally, that's fine, um, just simply go ahead and put it on Windows. Not a huge difference, um, So especially for the Arbiter. So the Arbiter could really run on uh, another Windows application server. It doesn't take any resources, um, well, it doesn't take that much, uh, that much resources because it only, again, kicks in when the primary goes down. So while it's sitting there, it is pinging the primary sort of keeping an eye on the health of the replica set. When the primary goes down, that's when the Arbiter really kicks in for the vote. Otherwise, it really is just sitting there idle. So uh, it, it is, uh, if you're going, for instance, with the uh, cloud, pick the perhaps smallest option you have for the server. If you are indeed trying to um, uh, uh, create a separate virtual machine for the Arbiter. Another option is to have a third Mongo server, and that's a full featured server. So here, of course, you have um, an advantage because you can do uh, reads against all three servers, right? So um, that is a preferred setup if, uh, uh, if we have a lot of aggregation going on, if we have a heavy personalized website. But for the most use cases, uh, again, the uh, primary, secondary, and an arbiter set um, will suffice. Now, let's take a look at the third option. And here's where we really get into a complex Mongo setup. So this is where we start getting into Mongo sharding. Now, this is a, this is a dangerous territory because it can get very expensive very quickly. Um, notice the difference in the amount of servers going from a simple replica set of three servers even maybe two servers, two database servers and one arbiter, two, let's see, six, eight, 11, uh, 11 Mongo servers are now required for the high availability sharded setup. Um, here's why, we have to have two routers for redundancy, of course, right? Uh, we, have, uh, we have to have a three, um, three configuration servers, again, for the same reason as a replica set. And we have to have two re sharded replica sets. Um, now this is high availability, remember. So the two, this is a minimal sh setup with sharded replica sets. So we have uh, two shards, and each shard has a replica set um, inside of it. So we're looking at 11 servers. And when do we want to switch over to this type of setup is when our data reaches the size of one terabyte or really gets you know, not necessarily reaches it, but gets close to one terabyte. Uh, now, this might may sound like a large number uh, to uh, to new Cycro users. However, consider how long you want to keep your Mongo data for. Uh, so, if uh, within the first year you're accumulating, let's say, 300 megabytes in Mongo data, which isn't really that much, uh, if you think about the um, you know the average, let's say, session object that gets saved into Mongo, we usually use about three kilobytes. Uh, so with high traffic websites and high per highly personalized websites, um, uh, especially with geo data, device data, and um, other information tagged on to the 
session object, they can grow pretty fast. Um, so let's say 300 megabytes uh, in the first year, you're really going to be approaching three terabytes, assuming no growth in your traffic uh, in three years. And uh, at that point, you have a choice, either archive the old Mongo data uh, or increase the, uh, the infrastructure to support the sharded instance. Uh, the reason why you want to start sharding at one terabyte is that's the suggested size at which Mongo uh, recommends sharding for performance reasons. So performance starts degrading um, around one terabyte of, uh, in size uh, in a simple replica set. So it is a matter of thinking how long you want to keep your data. So uh, measuring how much data is accumulated and planning ahead thinking how long you'd like to keep that data for. So let's say with a 300 megabyte per year example, if we would like to keep our data for at least five years, right, for the analytics, for the reporting purposes, we will have to switch to the uh, sharded instance after three years, right, Either way, uh, to avoid, of course, um, the performance penalty that comes with, a, uh, with reading large data sets in Mongo. So there you go. Uh, now, again, this is a very expensive setup. Uh, to find out more about the purpose of each, um, the router, the configuration server, and the sharded, um, how this all plays together, you can uh, read up more on it on the Mongo website. But it's really, you know, the router is exactly what it sounds like. The configuration in the router is keeping track of the, um, the Mongo and the shards and the traffic. Um, and, of course, we have the shards. Uh, with replica sets inside of them, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so again, we have a single Mongo server option, we have a replica set option, or we have a sharded, uh, sharded replica set option. And you can really, once you have this uh, sharded setup, you can just keep tagging on uh, extra shards as the data grows. All right, so hopefully uh, you found this video useful. If you have any other questions uh, about Mongo setup, please let me know. Um, put it in the comments below. Um, tweet at me. I'll, I'll reply back to you guys. Um, and uh, if you like the video, of course, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, for more tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com. And I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.